color. Sometimes you hate it, sometimes you don't. Working with color is always easy until you get further down into the color theory rabbit hole, and then it starts to get somewhat more complicated. Color is probably the element of art I pay attention to the second most, where line is the first, even though I dress like I've waded out of a dark pool of muted colors, but your colors can make or break a piece in its entirety if you don't want to learn to use them properly. Jesse, I don't want to hear about how I can't use super bright colors in my piece because I really like ice chain and it's my art style and ah, bah, 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 bah. We're literally seconds into the video. Give me time to elaborate on this. Let's continue. Now, I would say what our friend Google says about color, but, uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll simplify it a little, don't worry. Color is made up of different kinds of light that we've put into categories to understand them better. When it comes to light, all colors put together make white, which is why when you aim light through certain prisms, a rainbow comes out the other side. When we use physical colors, also known as pigments, we're using a subtractive color wheel, which is the common color wheel we learn in art class. We can also read our colors on the color wheel as primaries, secondaries, and tertiaries. All tertiaries come from secondaries, and all secondaries come from primaries, but you cannot mix colors to get primaries. Colors can also be used to evoke emotion create moods, or bring different aesthetics to certain things depending on the combinations used and the values applied. These sets of colors are called color schemes or color palettes, and making them look good is when our dear front of me color theory comes into play. Let's talk about three or more popular combinations. Arguably the easiest to work with is the monochromatic color scheme, which is defined as all the shades and tints within a single hue, which means it's a single color that you make lighter and darker. Don't worry, I I'm bad at explaining which is words, so I, I have an example to make up for my ineptitude. Pablo Picasso had a whole period where a bunch of his paintings were all just as blue as that Eiffel 65 song. And I think the tragedy is one of the better examples of pure monochromatic color schemes. This whole piece is literally just blue. In fact, my, my guy had a whole period where he used nothing but blue for a whole four years. Can you imagine doing nothing but one thing for that long? Couldn't couldn't be me. But it's that same blue made lighter and darker to create an entire piece. Using the single hue can also make it easier to pick out a single emotion, where the blue in this case is used to create a more sad and somber mood. Though, to be fair, I don't think I'd call a happy piece the tragedy, and Dadaism won't be invented for another decade or so after this piece. But that's an easy one. Let's move on. Arguably, the second easiest to work with is the analogous color scheme. It took me half a year to figure out how to pronounce without hesitating because I'm a walking buffoon. Analogous color schemes are three or more colors next to each other on the color wheel to create a scheme that's kind of like an evolved monochromatic color scheme. To push that point further, here's another bluish painting, Water Lilies from 1906 to be exact, by Claude Bonet. In this case, the main colors in this scheme revolve around blue, blue-green, green, and hints of blue, purple, and pink. But the largest difference of the colors is the difference in mood, even though their color schemes are fairly similar. Let's do a side-by-side -side on these. You see how Picasso's is super sad and almost depressing, while on the contrary, Monet's is actually quite peaceful and calming? This has to do with added value, which is another element of art that has to do with how dark and light a color is. While Picasso uses a lot more rich, dark tones, Monet sticks with more bright, soft tones in this piece, which switches up the moods even though the schemes are very similar. But we still got a couple more to talk about. Moving on. My personal favorite color scheme, and one of the trickier ones to get the hang of in my opinion, are complementary color schemes, the concept artist's favorite kind of scheme, and the scheme most used to set a moody atmosphere. In this one, you take colors directly across or opposite from each other on the color wheel to create color schemes. Red and green, orange and blue, and yellow and purple are the baseline popular ones, but you can get creative with them. However, with complementary especially, lots of debates happen between more traditional artists and more experimental artists, where the very basic rule of complementary color schemes is very often broken with experimental artists. Your complementary color should not be the same saturation or value, and should instead be on opposite ends of the spectrum. For instance, let's take a look at one of the main artworks to come from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Side note at how often I played this game when I first got it, once when I stayed home sick from school, I played it for a good 9 hours straight, which didn't help me in the slightest, by the way. A very popular but complementary scheme with more mature or serious games is orange and blue, where blue stays more dark and desaturated, while orange stays more bright. Orange then tends to be more of a highlight, whereas the blues tend to take up the majority of the piece as the main color of focus. With more traditional traditional artists, this is the only way to do it, where one color remains bright and minorly used, while the other color takes up the majority of the piece but stays muted and dark to create points of contrast, a principle of design, not an element. However, more experimental artists don't like to follow this rule whatsoever. Let's take a look at a piece I created solely for this video. This is more of a split complementary color scheme, but the same rule would apply regardless of whether it's complementary or split complementary. Here I've used red and a derivative of blue-green, teal, which is another favorite color combination of mine. When they're the same super bright saturation or value, it creates something called eye strain, which just creates harsh contrasts that aren't easy on the eyes at all. More experimental artists love to play around with this and create very striking color schemes that are anything but easy on the eyes. But even though it's applicable to every rule of art, before you play around with things such as messing with color and theory rules, make sure that you know them before you decide to break them. 
What I talked about here isn't even half the amount of the color schemes you could work with. If I talked about all those, we'd be here for way longer than just five minutes. But understanding the baseline for what colors you can work with and how you can work with them is key to creating great works of art to stunning works of art. For your next piece, try a color combination that you've never worked with before. Always work with analogous, try a complementary piece next time. Used to using a wide variety of colors, try a monochrome color scheme. Challenge yourself with the colors you use, and you may just find a technique that you like more than what you'd normally do. If you want another quicker rundown of the principle and another bonus color scheme, check out our worksheet on the topic on our blog, full of art resources for teachers, link down below. If you liked what you saw, make sure to leave a like on this video, comment down below to tell me what you'd like to see me draw next, and hit subscribe so that you never miss an upload. And hey, we art nerds gotta stick together, so join our little art community with the links down below. With that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye